<coughs> I used to write a family and friends letter a couple times a year. I gave that up in 2005, even though all of you told me how much you enjoyed and appreciated it. Then I began sending email updates and sent out several of those in late 2005 and early 2006. I'm going to send this one to you as an e-message, an attachment to an e-message, realizing that it was going to be rather long. My daily routine consists of arising at 6.15 a.m., scraping my face, doing sit-up and push-up exercises, taking the OJ and vitamins, and then heading, heading for Muxie's, where I consume a breakfast of coffee and bacon, eggs, and toast. I love using Google. I meet old friends there, and I make new ones. One of their regulars is Rick Smith, son of the Lloyd Smiths, who grew up and lived across the street from us at 104 Yulin Boulevard. My favorite person to Google is Meg Ryan. Andy might remember him. I work at staying connected with friends and making new ones, knowing that for many men in their post-full-time work era who withdraw and isolate themselves at home, driving their spouses to distraction and growing more unhappy with their life. I am determined not to be like that. Consequently, I have had lunch during the past month with Erner, Linda Kenny, Lisa Kempthorne, Emily Kohler, Tracy and John Gunderson, Suzanne Whitman, Diana Spar, my son Andy, Mike and Emma Dombrowski, and Bernice Dombrowski, whose ages range from 26 to 85. Their status is friend, friend, uh, friend, beloved niece, friend, special friend, beloved son, friend, friend, and Andy's beloved mother-in-law. In the month ahead, I plan to enjoy lunches with Gerald Caldwell, Daryl Whitener, Anna Hansen, Linda Petrin, Nina Falk, Tracy and John Gunderson, and their two amazing children, Palmer 15 and Catherine 10, and Diana. Ah, oh, yes. She's very, very beautiful. You can see. She kind of looks like Diana. Diana Spar is one of my dearest and closest friends. We have been together now for more than four years and continue to enjoy one another's company and to do many things together. This past month, she underwent appendix surgery and is now recovering, though more slowly than she had hoped. That experience led me to write the attached story, an unneeded appendage, for my weekly column in the Lebanon Daily Sun. Maybe I should use the word sexy? Meg Ryan's sexy pics. To have what I write published is a real ego trip, especially because many of my Lebanon and Boone County friends have made complimentary remarks about enjoying my stories. <coughs> My sons and their wives and children are a continuing source of joy in my life. John spent three days with me this summer, and during that time Andy, Eileen, Sarah, and Leah came from Westerville, Ohio. You can buy it for five dollars on eBay. Ned came in September, and we celebrated our birthdays at the Purdue-Miami, Ohio football game saw a good game, and loved being on the campus again. Now, three of my grandchildren are pursuing various degrees in three different universities and colleges. Beth, a PhD in educational policy. Uh, Sarah, an uh, MFA at Pratt Institute of Art and Design in Brooklyn. And Carl, in hospitality management at the University of of Kentucky. 
not to be outdone, John is in the research phase of his PhD in instructional technology at the University of Minnesota. Leah is a straight-A high school sophomore and an outstanding volleyball player. That's more what I'm looking for. Yes, Meg Ryan is a very dynamic individual. Well, I hope this brief recap catches the spirit of my life and times. Please know that I think of each of you, my beloved family and friends, daily, and I hold you in my nightly prayers. Love, Dad, Ned, Grandpa, Great-Grandpa, Uncle, Friend,